Let me start off with a story. I bought these pots maybe four months ago with the full intention of purchasing a few more to review them and I never got around to it. And by the time I needed to get around to it to find the extras, I couldn't find them anywhere locally. So I thought it's about time that I fully review them and we're going to take a look at Space Jam A New Legacy. That is a Pops that I'm talking about and this one is Lola Bunny. So very awesome character in the movie. Lola was practically the only Looney Tune that had any clue how to play basketball. So really awesome looking character. The pose is pretty much like any other basketball Funko Pop. So it's an okay pop. The basketball isn't textured like previous versions of basketball Funko Pops that Funko has made. So I would quite like to see that they did a textured ball at least to make this detail for this pop at least a little bit nicer. I also would have liked to seen her with a Wonder Woman version of her since she did become an Amazon warrior. Now moving on to Bugs Bunny who was a lonely rabbit on his Looney Tunes world until LeBron showed up. And once LeBron showed up, Bugs had the grand idea of putting together his old team from Space Jam 1 to make sure that LeBron got everyone. He did everything in his power to get everyone on the roster. And just like Lola Bunny Bugs is just a standard pose so nothing too detailed. The silver ball does make a nice difference in comparison to the ball that Lola had but he's also just a regular ball. Nothing textured about this ball. So just an okay pop Pretty much. Now Sylvester and Tweety perhaps everyone's favorite or the great majority of everyone's favorite anyway. I do like how they did Sylvester especially the fact that they managed to squeeze Tweety in with him while keeping Sylvester a nice large Funko Pop. Tweety is a usual cute figure though but if you are an out of box collector you may have quite the time getting him out of this packaging. But at the very least, they did make it easy for him to be displayed out of box. He does sit nicely on the ball. He doesn't move around too much, but if you nudge him, it may be an issue. He may turn over pretty easily. Sylvester isn't a bad looking pop though. I quite like how they designed this one. I think pretty much similar in comparison to previous ones before him. The paint job isn't the best looking paint job so if you're displaying him out of box you may want to pay attention to the one that you pick up to make sure that you get the one that has the best paint job. So that's how Sylvester looks. And up next is Marvin and I am going to say poor Marvin because Marvin wasn't too involved in the movie. First they stole his spaceship then he just got clobbered for the rest of the entire movie. Quite interesting that they put him in the jersey though. I didn't see him too much in the movie itself or even on the basketball field. I don't remember him being there. There is also a metallic version of him so I quite like the metallic version a little bit better than this one. I do love the details of his helmet. The brush on top of his helmet is that what you call it? There, there's a specific name for it I am very sure but I do like the helmet details as well as the details of his face so those are the favorite parts for me of this character. Moving on to the first goon squad member we have White Mamba. This is an awesome looking character. I quite liked how this character was done in the movie itself. Not the best looking goon squad Funko Pop but I absolutely love the details on this one. I think it's interesting too that the, the basketball is textured. It wasn't textured for the Toon Squad's basketball so I don't know why they did it that way. Her scales are also textured so nice touch. I think it's a pretty awesome looking pop. She wasn't too involved in the in movie. She did wrap around Lola quite a bit for the, for the movie though so that was interesting. I do quite like this pop though. Overall I think it's a very nice looking pop. Love the details. The nice attention to details are always good to see. I like how Funko put a bit more time into this one it wouldn't have seemed. So Really awesome looking pop. Next from the Goon Squad we have Wet Fire. Wet Fire is 100% my favorite pop 
from this line. I think he's an awesome character, especially in the movie. I I think this perhaps was my favorite character in the movie as a Goon Squad member. I absolutely love the colors that they use there for the water. So a little bit more opaque and then a little bit more translucent so you can see through that part this part a little bit more difficult to see through but love the details also the fact that his arms and legs are translucent so you can completely see through it the basketball the textured basketball the flames that is translucent as well well slightly and the color of his face versus the color of his hair this is just such a well put together Funko Pop. I absolutely love how Funko did this one. I do wish that Funko did pay this much attention to the rest of the line. I think he is perhaps one of the best designed Pops. I think they may end up putting this one as a glow in the dark in the future. I would love to see this one as a glow in the dark. There are so many different things that they could do with him as a glow in the dark Pop. So I did like the movie. I know a few folks didn't really like it, didn't really fancy it. I didn't expect it to be better than the first one. So I had no issues with it. I think it was a fun movie. Let me know in the comments down below if you were a fan of the movie, if you picked up any of these pops, which one was your favorite. And if you're looking for more videos to watch, I did pick Dom up earlier, which you can see somewhere there. Continue watching if you didn't see that video. I'd love the view. It would be greatly appreciated. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I am Ricardo, also known as the Pop Patrol. Until next time, bye for now.